Working with an affiliate network can be a great way to quickly grow your affiliate program, but it's not an all-in-one solution. You still need to put in the work yourself to grow. Today, I'm answering some of the most common questions I get about affiliate networks. I'll show you how to work best with them, how to handle the tech side of things, how to take advantage of what they have to offer, and what mistakes to avoid when working with an affiliate network. Welcome to the Affiliate Guy podcast. If you want to grow your income, serve your tribe, and enjoy all the benefits of affiliate marketing and having your own affiliates, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me today. Now let's get started. So over the past couple of months, I have had a bunch of questions about affiliate networks. You know, how do I work with them? How do I get, a, you know, into them? How do I, like, what about the tech side? Or there's different, you know, logistical questions, right? All of these things, like, how do I recruit affiliates to them? What mistakes should I be avoiding? And so today, I'm taking eight of those questions that I've been asked repeatedly over the past gosh, you know, past couple of months. And I was kind of like, none of these questions were like an episode in and of themselves. And so what I wanted to do was take all of them and do kind of a lightning round type of episode where I answer these eight questions about how to work best with an affiliate network. And so I'm going to dive right in. Before I do though, I want to make sure that you check out our first 100 affiliates report. This is where you get your first 100 affiliates. And we'll talk about this a little bit later. But before we get into it, go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash first 100, F-I-R-S-T-1-0-0. Make sure you download that report. I walk you through how to find those affiliates. I walk you through, you know, some templates that you can use to recruit those. So you want to go check that out at mattmcwilliams.com forward slash first 100. All right, question number one, which affiliate networks should I work with and why? Should it just be one or multiple? There's actually two questions here, and I'll get into the second one in a a moment. But, you know, our recommendation is share a sale. There's many others that are just fine. It's not that I have an issue with most of them. I do with some, you know. So there's really no right answer, but share a sale is my recommended one. And I'll put this link in the show notes, but you can go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash share a sale, share a sale, and sign up with them. But there's tons of others. I mean, the ones that come to mind you know, that are probably the biggest and most, you know, well-known ClickBank is for course creators and info products, Commission Junction, CJs for kind of the big brands, you know, of the world. It's very expensive for merchants. You know, if you're going to sign up to be on CJ, it's expensive. You know, share sale is considerably less expensive, you know, especially if you get the Friends of Matt discount. So if you reach out to me, if you want to sign up with share sale, in fact, if you want to sign up with ShareSale as a merchant, don't go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash share sale. Email me, matt at mattmcwilliams.com, or you can text me is probably the better way, 260-217-4619. Just text me and I'll hook you up with the Friends of Matt discount. You know, you get, you get a little nice little discount, but it's still, it's not much. It's a fraction of the cost of Commission Junction. Like I said, ClickBank is kind of the, course creators, info products type world, CJs for the big brands. Linkshare is a good one. There's Impact. You know, gosh, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. Avant Link, Awin. I mean, there's just so many. Share Sale is the one I recommend, although I've run some big brands on Share. So I ran, you know, Tiny Prince's affiliate program, which, you know, was, we took that, I mean, it was north of nine, it was a nine figure range, you know, with 25,000 affiliates. I mean, it was huge. And we ran that on share sale. So it's not just for tiny, you know, brands. It's for bigger brands too. It's just not typically, you know, you do the you do the work, you know, which we'll talk about as we go along is here. There's not a, they don't run it for you on share sale at all. So the second question that ties in with that, and, you know, the first one, you know, kind of said, you know, should it just be one or multiple? The second one I got was how, how do I integrate with multiple networks? And the answer to that is I wouldn't at first. There are some serious complications to that, meaning you might be way overpaying commissions. Years ago, when I was at Legacy Learning Systems and I was running the affiliate program for them, that was back in 2009, 2010. In early 2009, you know, I came on board, I took over this you know, small affiliate program, we grew it. So when it was small, they weren't really noticing something that was happening until we started growing and we definitely noticed it, which was, 
we were on multiple networks and we were overpaying because our customer would click through affiliate A on network A and then affiliate B on network B and they would convert through B, but A was still cookied on A. Nobody overrode it on A. So there's only one affiliate on each network and it was crediting both affiliates for the sales. Whereas if it had been on, you know, just an in-house program or just on one network, it would only be paying one of those, if that makes sense. It would only be paying, you know, if affiliate A and B are both on the same network, then B is going to get the credit. A is not going to get anything. And so it was a big problem because we were basically overpaying by 15%. You know, we went from reporting, you know, say about 400,000 in sales And within about five months, I had us up to about a million in sales. And and this was per quarter. So we were doing about 400,000 per quarter. I got us up to a million per quarter at that point. You know, but the profits were way down, like dramatically down. We could not figure it out until I was like, wait a minute. You have this thing on two networks, duh. You know, but I never run a program on two networks and it just didn't occur to me. And so if you do do this. If you do set up on multiple networks, if you do, you know, do an internal in a network, what you want to do is set up the network as an affiliate internally. And so, and then you have to do some stuff on your end that only fires the pixel if it's that internal affiliate. So how that would work is you would have your internal program on your in-house software, whether it be a plugin or something that you built yourself doesn't matter, okay? You've got your internal affiliate and you'll have an internal affiliate for network A and network B. And then you might even have an in-house program that you run. So if the person who's shopping goes through in-house affiliate A and then they go through affiliate B on network B and then affiliate C on network C, then each of those internal links is different and it's only going to credit one of those is how you avoid paying out the multiple commissions. Now, there's a little bit of tech work on the back end because you have to tell your system to only fire the network A cookie if the sale was produced by a network A affiliate. So how that would work, just so, you know, just to be clear, is if they clicked on network A affiliate. And that was the only thing they clicked on. Network A gets the credit. It's whatever affiliate referred the traffic, you know, through that. But if they click on a second one, then it overwrites that. And so that way you're not paying out multiple, you know, commissions that you don't need to be paying on. All right. Question number three is how do I get accepted as a merchant for the networks? Short answer is usually if you pay them and you're legit, they're going to accept you. You know, the big thing here is show that you're legit. They do not want to add riffraff to their network. I mean, they just don't. They want to add the highest quality merchants that they can add, the highest quality companies. They want to take a look at your website. Does your, you know, is your website easy to shop? Does it look nice? Are you professional? You know, is your price point reasonable? Are you, are you charging $5,000 for something that everybody else charges 200 bucks for? Are you charging 200 bucks for something that everybody else charges 5,000 for? You know, that's the big thing I'm looking for is legitimacy. I'm going to look at your BBB ratings if I'm going to network, you know, make sure you're not like some sort of a scam. I'm going to try to interact with your customer service and see what kind of customer service I get. But normally, you know, and this is why some companies with the higher upfront fees, it can be a good thing because it kind of rules out some of the riffraff, you know, on their end is how they look at it. But it really, if you pay and you're legit, you're probably going to get accepted. There's no like magic trick for getting accepted. You know, you know, if they say that they don't accept, you know, gambling websites and you're a gambling website, you're not going to get accepted. You know, so just make sure you're abiding by their rules and you'll be fine. The fourth question I got was, how do I make the integration easy? I'm, you know, I'm on WordPress in this example. You know, how do I like get all the codes and stuff? Easy answer there is ask the network. They are going to help with the code. It is in their interest to do so. They want your stuff to work. You know, they want your sales to track because they usually get paid a percentage of the sales. They're almost like a sub affiliate, you know, or a second tier affiliate. They want to get paid. So if it's not tracking, not only is that bad for you and bad for your affiliates, it's bad for the network. And so ask them, get them to help. It's usually really simple. It's usually copying and pasting some code, 
you know, maybe setting up something like we talked about in the second question about multiple networks a moment ago, but that's on your end. It's usually really simple. I mean, every time I've ever done it, I basically sent code to a developer and within an hour, we were set up and running. I mean, it's very simple. All right, question number five. Once I'm on the network, what is the best way to do outreach and get affiliates active? You know, the same principles that I always share. The big thing here is don't expect the network to do the work for you. They are not going to do your affiliate recruiting for you, okay? Like people think, oh, I get on a network and people are just going to find me. Yep, but that's going to be few and far between. And especially early on, they're going to find you, but they're going to look at your stats because your stats are public now. And they're going to go, well, this company doesn't even, they've never even made a sale. Their earnings per click is zero. Why would I sign up with them? Once you get some affiliates on board and active, then you can start attracting affiliates. You know, so this is 101. Like this is basic 101, how to recruit affiliates. You know, I've shared it before, but I'll share it again real quick. You look up affiliates who promoted similar products. So you type in your competitors' names and you look to see who's promoting them. Second is you find their email address. And we're not going to go into that because I've shared it before. We also cover this in our course, Find Affiliates Now. (laughs) You know, this is much more in depth. If you want to check that out at findaffiliatesnow.com, you can. You create a spreadsheet of the affiliates. And then you send them a specific email that basically says, hey, I noticed you were promoting something else. Here's what we have coming up or we're doing. Would you be interested? You know, love to share some more info with you. The key here is, you know, I often say like the objective is not to get a yes. You're not trying to get a yes. You are trying to get the three magic words, which is tell me more. So the biggest way you can screw up an affiliate recruiting email is to make it too long. In other words, don't try to fit everything into one email. Like I know you want to tell me you spent a bunch of time developing it. You want to share six testimonials. Tell me how awesome the sales funnel is. You want to brag on your commissions, the prizes, who else is promoting it. Don't do that. You just want to get a reply. That is all you are trying to do. That is all you are trying to do in this. So again, check out, you know, your first 100 affiliates report at mammoclaims.com forward slash first, F-I-R-S-T-1-0-0. That's a free report or you can check out our course, Find Affiliates Now. All those links are in the show notes. And I'm going to put a link in the show notes as well for that affiliate recruiting email that'll walk you through that as well. So the key here is just, you got to be active. Being on the network means nothing in terms of recruiting. The only advantage is if that affiliate that you're trying to recruit happens to be on the network, it's easier to sign them up. And they trust you a little bit more because you're on the network. But it doesn't mean, oh, I'm just going to get a bunch of affiliates coming to me, at least not early on. I shouldn't say it means nothing, but it means very little early on. So you got to go out and bust your butt to recruit affiliates. We'll make it easier, you know, if you check out our stuff, but you definitely got to put in the work on your end. Six question, what types of affiliates should I target? Well, I I just kind of talked about that. We cover that in the Your First 100 Affiliates report. If you're asking that question though, here's my thinking. You probably don't know a lot of people in your niche. You probably don't have like a list of potential affiliates just sitting around like, oh, you know, I've been in the industry for five years. You know, I've got... 50 or 60 contacts, it would be great affiliates. So you're going to have to do some cold email recruiting. You know, you're going to have to find some affiliates with your limited network or even affiliates that you don't even know. You know, this is just straight up recruiting cold. And and I would say, you know, probably 80 to 90% of the affiliates that we've recruited over the years, they began promoting for us for us and for our clients before we had any relationship with them. That means that prior to reaching out to them to ask them to promote something, we didn't know each other at all. We recruited them cold. So there's three keys to cold recruiting. Number one, you know, scale. Just sheer number of affiliates. You got to cast a wide net. Secondly is, you know, personalization. (laughs) You know, don't do the hello there or hi there or hi friend don't do that crap. All right. There's a 0% chance of this working. Mentioning, you know, their content, mentioning the programs or products they've promoted in the past, mention an interview that you saw with them or, you know, heard with them, congratulate them on an accomplishment. Like, Hey, congrats on finishing third place and -and so-and-so's launch, right? 
you know, that's key. So scale, personalization, and persistence. You know, we have just found that if we email a thousand affiliates, we'll get about 20. If we email them twice, we'll get about 40. If we email them three times, we'll get about 60. You know, eventually there's a point of diminishing returns, but the point is like, it's just persistence. Persistence, 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 persistence. And you've got to keep following up, keep following up, keep following up, keep following up. You know, if you want to actually get get affiliates, nothing beats persistence. Absolutely nothing beats persistence. And so you want to target those types of affiliates that have been promoting similar products. And that means, you know, they're probably going to be cold. And again, that's going to, you know, allow you to expand your network. So remember, scale, personalization, and persistence. Just cast a wide net, personalize the communication, and follow up 10 to 12 times. All right, seven. The question is, what affiliate management software and plugins do you recommend with networks? Which ones do you recommend? What are the best ones? Why do you recommend them? And are there any deals on them? Well, the network is your tracking. You know, that's your management platform. You don't need anything else. Now, I mentioned if you have some internal stuff, you know, if you're running an internal program and a network, well, then, you know, you need the internal stuff. And there's so many. I mean, there's iDev, you know, Infusionsoft. If you go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash toolbox, I've got some recommendations there. But, you know, the network is going to be your primary tracking, especially if that's all you're using. If you're not using an in-house one, that's going to be all of your tracking. That's going to be where all of your reporting and all of that stuff is. So, all right, last question here. Number eight is, how do I best leverage affiliates? Good question. I mean, number one, well, you got to get them activated. You know, I mentioned that earlier. I think that was question number five. I mentioned you've got to get them activated. And so I did an episode not terribly long ago. I did a series on onboarding. So, Make sure you go back and listen to that. It was probably about, I don't know, 15 to 15 weeks ago. You know, this will go live in, I think, late March of 2022. So probably like, you know, beginning of the year-ish, maybe end of last year. I did a series on onboarding your affiliates. I also did one on activating affiliates. Well, go listen to those episodes. You know, that's the first thing. You've got to get them active. You've got to get them onboard. You've got to get them, you know, you need to give them what they need. I did a a whole episode on this as well. Like, you know, I walked, they need general direction. Like these are the seven musts for us in our agency, right? They need general direction. You need to train them. You need to give them lessons. You need to, you know, share tips and strategies with them. They need swipe copy and they need to know how to use it. They need graphics. They need banner ads. They need mailing plans. They need to be told, here's what to do. What are the best days to mail and, and who do I send them to? And, you know, so we create those mailing plans, right? We have their, we call them the ABC plans, all in or aggressive, balanced and conservative, ABC. And so they need that. They need to be told what to do and when to do it. They need a promo checklist, a very simple checklist about like, you know, you know, here's what you need to be doing and on this day. And it's just a kind of a a checklist above and beyond mailing plans. Like make sure you blog post, you know, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever you're using, right? And they need to feel a part of the process. So give them behind the scenes access. Make sure you create a Facebook group, ask for their help, share testimonials, explain your thinking, right? You know, just keep them updated and make them feel like they're a part of the process. And then the last thing that comes to mind is, um, you know, internally with our agency, we call it the EVE formula, EVE, entry points, variety, and energy. They need multiple entry points into your funnels. You know, they need, whether it be a workshop, a PDF, a webinar, you know, a podcast series, whatever the the case may be, they need multiple entry points. When we studied, I shared this, I don't know, 20 or 30 episodes ago, what was the biggest difference between seven and eight figure launches? Number and variety of entry points. Number and variety of entry points. The second V, you know, speaking of variety is variety. They need a variety of things to promote. So not just entry points, but when you get to the sales, you know, part, when you get to open cart, for example, if it's a launch, different things, can they promote, you know, 
open cart? Can they, is there a fast action bonus? Is there a mid cart bonus? Is there a live stream, you know, that we can drive them to, to sell? Can we possibly do, you know, phone calls? Can I drive them to do phone calls with the sales team or chat with somebody like different things like that? And they need your energy. They need your energy. You've got to be the biggest cheerleader for the product and for your company and for your affiliate program or what the heck are they going to do? They're going to be like, whatever. So all of these things apply to any program, but of course they apply to working with a network as well. A lot of times with a network, I see a lot of people like, you know, they run the program and what they, they send it a monthly affiliate newsletter and they expect their affiliates to do anything with that. What the heck? I don't want your newsletter. This is 2022. Stop sending newsletters. Stop emailing only once a month. Email your affiliates three, four times a week. Make it useful though. Don't email them just for the sake of emailing them. It used to be that just email for the sake of emailing. No, make the emails useful. This is marketing. You're marketing to your affiliates. So market to them. Send them a lot of emails with updates behind the scenes. You share testimonials with them. Give them new tools, announce new products. You know, treat it like a, basically an ongoing launch with your affiliates. Keep them engaged in the process and so they can see your energy. So that's our lightning round here for how to work with an affiliate network. There's a little bit of nuance, but it's about the same as working in-house with some of those nuances, like I said. I am so excited, guys, about the next episode going a little bit off the track of specifically affiliate stuff. I want to talk about how to build your team This is something we've been doing intentionally over the past couple of years. You know, we've scaled up from, you know, six people just a couple of years ago to, I think we're, well, she starts in less than two weeks now, our 15th team member, I think. So we're scaling up. I've been there and done that before, you know, 2005 to 2011. We, you know, we scaled the company from basically nothing, just the three of us to 52 people and and doing, you know, one and a half million dollars a month in sales. And so I've been there and done that. And I know what it's like to scale. It's a super fun process, but if you do it right. So next episode, I'm going to talk about how to build your team. We're talking about working with virtual assistants, just when you're getting started, like how do you work with somebody who five, 10 hours a week? How do you work with contractors? How do you work with full-time employees to scale your business? So make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss that episode. And make sure you share this episode. If you know somebody who needs this, you know, they're maybe trying to work with an affiliate network or start an affiliate program, they could use this or next week. Tell them about the podcast so they don't miss out on this information. And with that, we'll wrap up and I will see you in the next episode talking about how to build your team. Thank you so much for listening today. Remember to check out all of our deep dives into affiliate marketing at theaffiliateguide.tv. And if you have a question, ask it at asktheaffiliateguide.com. Who knows? Maybe you even be featured on an upcoming episode. And lastly, if you haven't yet, make sure to leave a rating and review wherever you're listening to this episode. See you soon.